These tools and the good communication really build um, consensus amongst the team. In a lot of developing countries, it's a very top-down hierarchy in terms of management. And a lot of the junior staff don't feel part of the team. It's the, the director who gets all the communication. So it's very important to involve the junior members be, to feel part of the team. Um, I think the main the main point that I try to uh, express to each country when we start is that it's their job to be problem solvers. Don't ignore the problems, try and solve them. And um, it, seems, it seems easy for us to say that, um, but it's just, um, in a lot of countries, it's just, um, it hasn't been a priority in prosthetics or in rehabilitation to really be a problem solver. So we, we spend a lot of time teaching that. We like breaking things and then finding out why did they break. Um, we encourage rigorous debate. We don't want just the, the older manager or the director telling people what to do. We want everybody to be involved in, in the discussion. But at some point, you know, you, when, you have, when you're working on the design process, um, you have to make decisions. So there's got to be a mechanism in place to have rigorous discussion. But at some point, you've got to have a mechanism to bring that discussion to a head and make a decision on the product because we're heading towards producing a product. Um, as we go through the design process, the prototype machinist or, or the artisan um, is really important to bringing those ideas to life. So once we have a physical product, things really change when we can start to really touch a physical product and start to test it. Again, uh, the prosthetic technologists are really important in this process because uh, they are the group that are trained to fit those products to the patient. So they have to be, um, uh, the prosthesis has to be comfortable first before we can apply products to the end of the prosthesis. Um, and don't forget, um, in a lot of uh, developing countries, there's some incredibly skilled artisans that have uh, just basic trades. Um, this gentleman, um, he works, his, his office or his little factory, if you like, is about six foot square. And he has a kiln, a coal-fired kiln, that's it in the back there, and a piece of railroad tie. And this guy can make anything with a hammer. He makes scissors, he makes knives, he makes sides, anything. So like, we use him for making some of the devices. Again, um, consulting experts, um, don't be afraid to um, bring in other people when you don't have the resources or the skills. So when we're um, designing a new product, it really comes from the patient. And, and we teach our prosthetists and engineers to really ask a lot of questions and observe well when they're um, meeting with patients, to really listen and to see what the patients want. And if they keep mentioning a particular um, point, uh, that, that's what, how we develop new product. Uh, as a suggestion, and this is just an example, um, we got a, uh, a lot of suggestions from patients up in the mountain areas of Vietnam um, that the foot that they were using just wasn't very comfortable for them to walk uphill and downhill. And so we kept hearing this through the prosthetists and engineers, and so we started to work on developing a, a mountain foot, something that was easier for them. Um, so we analyzed, we, um, we really uh, spent a lot of time analyzing the current products. Um, I keep telling the, the engineers to cut things in half. I want you to get inside the product. So cut it in half on a bandsaw and get to look into We don't have a lot of high tech equipment in these countries, so that you can always cut something in half and look inside. So this is a way for them to analyze the function of the product. And then we also do a lot of work on inspecting broken components. And um, this is something that I've taught the engineers, you know, that a lot of times they would just throw things in the garbage can because it's broken, it's no good. We just give them a new one. But the secrets, the secrets of why things have been broken are, are in the broken products. 
and you've just got to analyze them carefully and put that information on a database so you can really understand which parts are good and which parts need to be improved. So we have a, a process of continuous product improvement. Um, in the design process, uh, we, we teach uh, basic drawings uh, so we can communicate. Um, this is not always there, but um, it's pretty easy to teach. And we also teach um, um, tolerancing, you know, which, which dimensions can be loose and which dimensions have to be held tight and how to do that. Um, I personally um, sketch a lot. So I use just hand sketches and the scanner. And I use these things every day. I mean, I can uh, do one of these things in five minutes to communicate an issue that they're working on, and uh, they can see what I'm saying, rather than just saying, trying to describe it more. Um, we develop, um, as we're going through the process of developing products, we develop um, all of our own testing equipment, uh, just locally. Um, this is a static force test um, for strength, just to see if things break. Uh, if the product will break under certain loads. Uh, then we develop a, uh, a cycle testing machine. This was made in Vietnam, about $400 for this machine. Uh, but it's invaluable for um, testing the durability of feet. And we just keep that uh, foot on there for about a million cycles. Once a second, it gets loaded. The same, approximately the same loads as walking. And so we can uh, really understand how our foot's going to hold up before we can put it in the field. So we get to a, a prototype um, of a foot and a, a different feet. And so we can mold these in our own factory that we have there. Um, this, is, this foot is actually uh, vulcanized rubber. Um, well, the whole um, soft part is vulcanized rubber with a hardwood core. And then we, um, we, bond, we mold that together. We take these uh, samples. And you can see there's a variety of different samples in the foreground there. And then we have um, local um, amputees that have uh, proven to be good uh, test subjects, and uh, the local prosthetists, and then we will do field testing um, of those products and uh, actually walk with the patient when they're doing the trial. So this was actually done at a local hillside outside of the prosthetics factory. Um, the patient would uh, walk a, a course up the hill and we tried to find obstacles that he had to, that were similar to his environment. Um, and then the, the uh, engineer or the prosthetist would walk beside the patient and ask the patient to give feedback as they were actually going through the trial. And we did that with a number of products and the patient uh, wouldn't be told which product we were really focusing on. So we got a scatter of information. So um, in Vietnam, we've been developing um, components uh, since 19, we started in 1996. And we have developed a, uh, a complete line of uh, adult and uh, child-sized feet. Um, there's two kinds of feet. There's a basic, what we call satch foot, which is a, a solid ankle, cushion heel foot, very basic foot made out of rubber. And then we made the mounting feet. Um, We've also uh, manufactured knee joints and um, uh, pylons, as you said, the black, um, the black uh, tubes that you see on these above knee prostheses, um, and some other uh, adapters um, for different uh, other applications. So thank you very much. And uh, if you wanted to see um, more of our work, you can go to our website. I think there's a simpler version. It's called uh, a new leg dot org. <laughs>